What's up, family? I'm Atenel Bay. And it's your girl, Danny B, baby. And this is the Culture Effect Podcast, where we bring you content from the culture that affects you. Peace, peace, family. What's good, sis? What's good, bro? How you doing? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. You looking good tonight? Well, thank you. What, what you what you setting up for a, a late night date or something? No, the bed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can dig like, it. I can dig it. Time's late. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, this is our second episode. We're re really happy to be here. And, um, you know, I'm saying we thank y'all again for tuning in, you know. And like we said before, we're going to bring y'all good content. Um, today, we got a, a special topic um, called the coronavirus and how it affects you. Um, and, and so on this episode, we'll be touching on how the coronavirus affected us personally and how the coronavirus affected the economy as well. But before we get into that, we want to say uh, thank you for our special guest host, Tiz the Gator, who is not here today. Um, so we want to say thank you for him for allowing his presence to be on our channel and, uh, and on our podcast. And we appreciate him. He has a podcast coming called True Spill uh, with Tiz the Gator. You can check that out on Facebook. Uh, he has a book coming as well. So y'all can tap into him. Um, but yeah, this is the Culture Effect TV uh, um, brand, uh, uh, the Culture Effect podcast, and we here to set the record straight for all the people, man. We here to give you good time content. So, sis, I want to ask you this before we hop into our topic tonight. Yeah. Have you seen all the stuff about Quavo and Tweety? I looked at the video TMZ had. Okay. Right. Um, and this, I guess, this is my intake on it. Domestic violence is only a problem when it's famous people. So TMZ is worrying about the famous people. The news is worrying about the famous people. It's all over the place. Oh, my God. She hit him. He hit her. Or he swung her into the elevator and all that. But what about the, the regular people? Right. Why, why, why are we worrying about the rich and not the regular ones? The ones right. that ain't got that money but get beat up every day. In broad right. daylight, too. Where's people cameras at the end to make sure that's videotaped and, and put out there where the police investigate that? So see, it's two sides to that. I, I don't like that. Right. This, this whole country is one sided. It's like, oh my God, when it's famous, it's all out there. But then what about everybody else? You got women that are abused. It is some men that are abused. You got people that totally. record the stuff like it's, oh my God, it's, oh, this about to go on TikTok or Snapchat and all that. I don't know. That's that's just me. That's me. So I let, just... me let me ask you this though. What do you think about the video itself? Do you think Quavo was actually hurting, sweetie? Or was Sweetie hurting Quavo? What did it look like to you? The thing is this, the video is so sub, how you kinda, subliminal because you see the video, you see that she swung, but he backed up. She grabbed for the bag. You know what I'm saying? He swung her into, I don't even think it was really a forceful swing, but he swung her into there and she hit the uh, back of the elevator and went down. Okay. We don't Something know what bad, happened. Though. Though. This is the thing. They only caught this much of it. So, like, right. we don't know what else happened and transpired before they even got in that elevator. We don't know who really put their hands on who and who was doing what. We really don't know. I think both of them yeah. are just guilty. Both of them guilty in the whole situation. Absolutely. Wait, wait, no matter how much of a snippet you get, I can't say she was wrong. I can't say he was wrong. All I see is she swung, he booped, and you see him swing her into that. Like I said, I don't know unique. if it was really a, oh my God, a, just like a forceful swing. We don't know that. That's just on camera. Right. So we really don't know. So I, I can't say that he hurt her in that kind of way on that elevator that day. Right. All I know is both of them wrong. And that's I mean, a unique plus if you're, ordering, have. if you're arguing over some, whatever, the PlayStation or whatever kind of bag that was or whatever. Girl, let it right. go. Is it that serious? Like, girl, boo bye. Yeah. We argue over stuff that is so little and small if you rich and you got money why are you arguing over that you could replace it true facts yeah absolutely and then for you to have the perspective that you have as far as being a woman and saying yo that dude didn't do nothing wrong you know what i'm saying it, it speaks uh volumes about yourself that you can see it from different perspectives because right. you know the first thing that a person would say is that Yo, uh, he beating a woman, he beating a woman, but they really don't know the ins and outs of that. You know what I'm saying? They don't know every detail. 
And um, to elaborate on what you were saying earlier, as far as like the police or the public don't pay attention to regular domestic violence. And um, I would say I agree with you somewhat, but I, I really do think that um, in today's in today's society, domestic violence has really been um, put on high alert uh, for different cities and, and different um, communities because it is a devastating thing. And a lot of people are dying from it, uh, whether it's male or female. And um, I'll, I'll go all the way back to O.J. Simpson. I feel like ever since O.J. did what he did, they've been really tough and strict on domestic violence. It's even to the fact where nowadays you can't even um, legally carry a gun if you get convicted of domestic violence, even though it's a misdemeanor. And, um, you know, um, normally or throughout history, if you have a felony, you can't carry a gun. But now if you have a domestic violence misdemeanor, you cannot own a gun. And so with that being said, I think they've done a lot of things uh, to move forward in that, in that position. But like you say, I do agree that they put more light on, uh, um, you know, different um, politics, uh, politicians rather, celebrities, rappers. All I say is this, man, a happy home, a happy wife, happy life, happy home. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. And I'm going to just like piggyback right off of that again. So like you said, ever since the OJ thing, you think they've like been real strict on a lot of that domestic violence stuff. And I can't agree with you on that because you still have it where women have reported abuse numerous times with the police and yet they still won't do nothing unless he didn't put a hand to her. Domestic violence come in all forms, not just hitting. So with that being said, no, they don't. And the problem is, is that it's a lot of male cops out there too that to look at her like, what did you do? So I'm sorry, I can't say that it's gotten better. I think it still has gotten worse because there's so many reports. If you look at the reports that has been filed with women, all over the world and cops don't do anything until he has to physically put his hands on you. But the thing is that they have, and you can have, okay, he had domestic one, battery one, domestic two, but okay. And then now he went and murdered the girl. So I'm sorry, you arrested him once, you arrested him twice. Now he didn't kill her. Now you arrested him for murder. So I'm sorry. Like, when is it enough? When are you going to really do your do your thing because I understand domestic one is really not a felony. It doesn't become a felony into three. See, domestic yeah. one is a is a misdemeanor. Two is a misdemeanor. A Until you get to three, that becomes a felony at that point. So see, you slapping them on the hand the first round, the second round, and to the third round. So I'm sorry, but sometimes people don't make it to the third round. Right. So you should be slapping it on the first round. You oh my God. So I I don't know. It needs right. to change and people need to be really aware of it. Even if you see her with a scratch, a black eye under here and she tell you she ran into the dough knob. Okay, sis, is that right. what you really want us to think? You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to protect him as much right. as possible. So he won't get in, go to jail, get in trouble because of the fear of getting hit again. Right. So we do need to be mindful of that and just really pay attention to it. Um, I definitely it is, respect what you're saying. Yeah. Bye. No, let me just touch on something before we go, before we get off that subject. All right. Because, because you know, we got the female perspective, we got the male perspective. I've seen some of my homeboys go to jail for, for not doing nothing to a girl. Her just calling them, wanting him to get out the house. And, and she'll lie and say, he touched me. Or whatever, and they and they would take him to jail, and I was there, and I would tell the officer, "Yo, he ain't touch her," and they would take his her side and take him to jail. So that you know, it it, it worked both ways because a lot a lot of women use that that domestic violence thing to their benefit, and and I'm not saying all, and I respect all women. You know, what I'm saying I have I have a mother, I have sisters, I have you know aunties, cousins, and all that, and I respect all women, and any nigga that put his hands on a woman. It is 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 uh, is lower than scum, right? In my eyes, right? For sure. So, with that being said, though, some egregious women use that to their benefit, and they really take it to another level and try to put a person or male rather in a position that he don't really need to be in. 
You know what I'm saying? Because they got hate because he cheated and he don't want her no more and so on and so forth and never put a hand on that lady. But that man got that domestic violence charge. But that being said, I really can't see it from your point where you saying that it don't work. It works tremendously. Obviously, if they're, if they're arresting people without any evidence, without any strong evidence, you have somebody there saying that didn't happen. But because they want to keep the woman safe, which is cool, they arrest the guy anyway, so which messes up his record. So if you have, sorry about that for cutting you off. So if you have paid attention to the laws, they have actually changed. So see, the thing is that women can no longer cry wolf. You can no it's longer just, just say, oh, he hit me and he go to jail. That's not how it's it works anymore. Nevada it's law is still just like that as well. So now they want to say, right. you got a bruise? He ain't got a bruise? You ain't got a bruise? <clears> no, <throat> you're not. It's not going to happen because then they're going to take both of y'all. Right. So see, that's, that's and, and women have, and I can agree with you on that. So women have, the reason why the law changes because how women cry wolf. OK, so that's why the laws have to change to also protect the male. So, yes. Now, no, you, if you if you hit me, then you hit me. If if you we didn't hit each other and you want to still go call, you can go call. But guess what? We both going to go down. Right. Right. No right. OK. He can okay. pull you to this side and this side. Y'all both going to get taken. And that's Absolutely. Here they're not even playing that no more. They're just like, you know what? We don't know who did what. So we're just going to take both of y'all. Yeah, pretty much. And if, all right, she, all right, if, she, all right. if you see bruises on him and she ain't got no bruises, she going down. Right. Now that's true. That's true. I mean, I've seen I've seen all different kinds of cases of that. So like it's not no one thing. It's not no one straight. It's a gray area. It's not black or white. And I just, I'm just gonna say that. It's not black and white. It's different opinions, it's different rules, different laws. It varies from each state. And I just hope everybody that that's in a domestic violence situation, please get out of it. Get you some help, whether it's male or female. Get y'all some help. It's something better out there for you. You know what I'm saying? Be treated like the king or queen that you are. Salute. I agree. I agree. So we go. We go. Move on to to our original topic, which is the pandemic and how it affected you, right? Mm -hmm. And so I want to lead it off with um a couple statistics. So the source is ourworldindata.org. And it says that the United States of America has 550,000 deaths. India has 160,000 deaths. And the UK has 120,000 deaths overall when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's the top three countries. And so with that being said, um, a lot of people have died from this, this pandemic or this disease. I definitely think myself personally that health and age plays a factor into this disease. Um, and I believe so because it's about population control and survival of the fittest. And so with that being said, I want to get your opinion on how the coronavirus has affected you personally and your family. Okay. So I'm going to piggyback off of what you just said, because you said you believe it has something to do is, is with health and, and, and age. Um, I mean, the age part I can get, uh, but the health part, no, I can't because it's mixed with that. You know what I'm saying? So you can have somebody that's healthy and we've seen where healthy, no underlining issues and still died. So that is a little bit bothersome too, because you would think it would just attack the people who have the underlying issues, but it's been more than enough of non underlying issue people who have died with COVID. So that's that. Um, but I'm going to read something too. Um, um, so if you, we all remember Sylvia Brown, the world renowned psychic. I used yeah. to listen to her a lot. Um, she, she, so she uh, but she had, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So um, let's just say in 2008, so I'm going to read this. Um, in 2008, self-proclaimed psychic Sylvia Brown published The End of Days. Um, it was a doomsday book um, that prophesied the severe pneumonia-like illness would spread in the globe of 2020. 
So she says, in around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness was spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes and all known treatments. She wrote, almost more baffling than the illness will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived, attack again 10 years later, and then vanish completely. Okay, okay so that she wrote in 2008 as a prediction that will happen in 2020. Okay. So that was really um, when they came out with that insider, everybody started talking about that because a lot of people remembered that. And I was like, it had me go Google and read it. And I was like, wow. And I actually had to go and read the doomsday book, the end of days. And I was like, let me go read this. And it was literally in the book. And I was like, oh my God, like she literally predicted this. She said it was a man like virus. This was right. created and it was correct. Like, you know, I know a lot of people don't believe in psychics and things like that, but I believe in spirits. I believe in the psychics. I believe in ghosts. I believe that there is, you know, all these things. Um, but how has it affected me? Um, let's just say when it started, um, March 2020 is when the schools shut down. Right. Um, and then that's when we're like trying to figure out babysitting, like, Oh my God, like the kids are got to be home. We had to make sure now we supply the house with extra food because now they're home all day compared to the eight hours that they're in school. Now you got to make sure you got breakfast and lunch before dinner. So, you know, I, I can't say it was a bad struggle for me, but yeah, sometimes it came to the point, well, you know, the kids is hitting here at home and they're just eating up. The light bill went up some, the gas bill went up some. I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, the everything they was like the the phone you know i didn't have unlimited on my on my cable my everything was just going up and i was like oh my god you know what i'm saying so that was i think that was the thing for us and it was still like i didn't want the kids to go outside and play and touch touch the railings and touch things so i kept them like really secluded for a long time and i just was like you know they was like can we still go outside and play with our friends and i was like well i you know you want them to right you want them to go have fun, but then at the same time, it's like, but I don't know if that person, you know, your friend, if their parents are really protecting their kids from the outside world too. So we never know what their household is doing to enforce yeah. sterilization and things like that. So then I was like, no. So I kept them away for a long time. And now that they have to start going back to school, now I'm just like, okay, yeah, you can go outside. You can go play. Let me just see how it is. You know, I don't know. I just, well, I, I know every the world is in a panic. Right. Because everybody don't know what's going on, what's why going it came, on. why right. it's killing people, why it's doing what it's doing. The only thing I made sure is that they stay masked at all times. If we have to go to the store, you wear your mask. If we got to sanitize our hands, you sanitize your hands. You just make mm -hmm. sure that you're not touching something you shouldn't be touching. And once you've touched something, just sanitize and clean your hand. And when you get home, just wash your hands. But I think that was the kicker there. Um, I also took two months off from work. Um, they allowed us to have like an emergency leave because I had some, I have underlining issues. So I took two months off um, and just was with the kids. I think that was just a really good time. But I think I, I think I would have wished that I could stay home during the whole time, you right. know, and not go and, and work from home. So I, I think some employers should, you know, allow their employees to be at home with underlining issues and still get paid. Like we were yeah. getting paid. And then all of a sudden it was like, no, you just have to go to work. So we were forced yeah. to go back to work. It wasn't just like, yeah, you can take your vacation time, but we shouldn't have to. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's it's That's totally it, agree. It, you should, you should, you know, have that emergency time and, and funds for people with underlining issues that just, you know, so I always have to be careful, you know, Right. Um, we've had, you know, someone with COVID um, at my place of work. So that was kind of scary because everybody was around her. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like, OK. Yeah. So, you know, you got to yeah. always be careful. And it was like it, it kind of gets you into the OK, should I go get tested? But she wasn't in my face long enough. We we were still masked at, at the, like, you know, the majority of the time. So, you know, I guess we didn't yeah. have to worry about that. But. Right. Um, I don't know. That was it. You know, I just, you know, you it's feel, you feel bad thing. for, huh? That's that's the only thing that affected you. I'm I'm saying your personal perspective of coronavirus 
that that's what it was. That was what it was. It, it didn't affect yeah. me in any way. You know, it's like yeah. if you if you already prepared for a lot of things, then you, you don't have to get prepared. Uh, right. I didn't have to go to the grocery store and and go rack up and do all that stuff that a lot of people were doing. I didn't have to worry about that part of it because we were already prepared. We have a lot of kids, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you, no you got the pantry full all the time. You got the, you know, I think we just went in for more water, you know, things like that. But we stayed stacked with toilet paper, with with all those things. So it wasn't like it was a panic for us to hurry up and get to the store or hurry up and go get gas because I keep it on full. Right. So, you know, I just, our part was just seeing the kids go through that. I think that was the more, that was more painful just to see them not be able to go outside not be able to really go to school, have fun like they used to, because everything has changed. I mean, heck, you can cough and people think you got COVID. You know, no, they, they forget talk. it's a flu. They they forget it's flu season. They forget it's allergy season. They forget all of the other things that can go on throughout the year. But if you cough, mm -hmm. you cough, you sneeze, oh my God, like you got COVID. No. No, no they do that. You know, and it's crazy. Like, yeah. don't assume. Don't don't assume that somebody has something because they cough or they sneeze. It is what it right. is. Right. You know, people can still catch a cold normally. People can still have allergies. And that is crazy, too, because I have allergies. My daughter Me has too. allergies. Me, too. You know? So yeah. what about you? How has so, it been so, out, you know? So um, it affected me... Um, in the way that I, I got laid off from my from my 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 job, I got laid off from my job, um, you know. So I lost income for a short period of time, um, you know. But I regained that income shortly after, so that really didn't totally affect me. Um, and as well as like the kids being home, but to me though, I um I took that in in stride. Like I want to be around my kids more often. I want to be. My wife took off like three months from work. She was working at um a, um a retail store or whatever have you, and so she took like three months off just to be safe because my daughter has asthma, um really bad. I have asthma really bad, and we didn't know what was going on at the time. It actually seemed like it was a movie, like a nigga was dreaming or something. You know what I mean? So uh, we uh we we you know we we were like we wasn't spooked because we got strong faith right, and we got a spirituality. A, a divine connection with the higher source that's unmatched. So we wasn't scared. We was just like, yo, we got to get prepared because we were prepared in some in some instances. Excuse me, as far as like food or whatnot. Right. But then it was like, okay, now if it really does hit the fan, we get some uh, survival uh, 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 gear. You know what I mean? Uh, let me go buy some land. So one of the biggest things that took uh, place in my household is that we purchased 11 acres of land because of the COVID vac uh, because of the COVID virus. Um, so what happened was we had already intentionally uh, wanted to buy land, right? We had already been seeking it out, researching it, and all that. So I had put it off, though. I put it off. This was like 2019. I put it off to the side, like, yo, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Once I found out how easy it was, I was like, okay, I'm going to wait. But when COVID hit, I was like, yo, what if I need to get out of town? What if this stuff really spreads and, mm -hmm. and start taking out people like, you know, like that? So I, I end up buying that same land that I had seen before 11 acres of land in Arizona. So, like, that's one of the pivotal points in my life, which I'm glad it happened, right? And so uh, we bought that land. But we was at home where it wasn't nothing for me to just bunker down and hunker down with my family. I think it's like one of the best things that ever happened to my relationship and my household, to be honest, mm -hmm. right? As far as that. But um, a lot of people did die from it. And I have some loved ones that I lost because of COVID. Um, a couple of uh, my uncles, you know what I'm saying? A couple of cousins, older, fam older family members have you that passed away from COVID. Um, and they did have underlying conditions, so it really started making me get that aspect of, you know, um, yo, you need to get more healthier because it is attacking certain parts of the body. And once you learn the uh, molecular structure of this thing, you understand, like, the science of it. Because, see, people can talk about what they want to talk about all day about what they think and how they feel. But when you get into the science of this disease, you understand that it attacks certain portions of the body. 
and the lungs being one, right? And so right. I have asthma, my daughter has asthma, so we had to really be safe. So we went out and bought the humidifiers, we bought tons of um, um, hand sanitizer, bleach and all that, and we stayed safe, you know what I'm saying? We stayed safe, we stayed out the way, and it was basically social distancing. And, and once they told us that, uh, you know, everything's locked down, we was good with that. We didn't have no problems with that. We would take our little nightly walks and we would get out together um, and, and do our thing. Um, right. I haven't seen this many people and kids outside since I was a kid in the 80s and 90s, right? Okay, before before this pandemic, on, on Easter, on Christmas, you go outside, you will not see no kids playing or nobody outside. But ever since this pandemic happened, all of 2020, every holiday, every day, you go outside and it was like a movie. You would see a ton of people outside riding bikes, right. kids playing. So that's a good thing. See, sometimes uh, the universe has a, a way of resetting things and say, hey, won't y'all get back to what it used to be or how right. it should be? You get what I'm saying? So we took, I took a more um, spiritual um, thought process when it came to the COVID COVID virus, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the coronavirus, COVID-19. And um, with that being said, it really didn't affect me um, as far as internally at home, because we were still being positive and all that, but I did feel it from my um, loved ones passing away. And um, and I wanted to just also elaborate on what you said earlier about um, what's her name, Sylvia Brown. She used to be on the Montel Jordan show, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Martel Williams, so I'm sorry. She used to be on Martel Williams. And yeah, and, and and perfectly so, like she is a psychic. But we must understand that um, it's been other viruses in the past. The Spanish right. flu in 1918, that that happened. It was something similar to COVID. <laughs> and so um, her her saying what she said, I get, I get that, you know, people believe it. But she has been known to be a fraud in some instances. So, but what she said, I guess it did come too, right? But she has been. It wasn't proven fast. Though. Her being a problem well, was proven fast because she's predicted a lot of sickness around the world. So she's predicted. It says right here in the, Huffington, in the Huffington in the Huffington Post, uh, in the Huffington Post dot com, it says in May two thousand and three, Brown predicted on Larry King that she would die when she was eighty eight. She was well off by eleven years. It also says that Brown rose to fame in part because of her frequent appearances on Montel Williams' show between 91 and, and 2008, where she would, would claim to speak to the dead and offer information about missing people. And one dude, of her that has most been infamous, also true, though. Hold on, can I, let me finish this real quick, sis. I say one of her most infamous predictions came in 2004 when she told Luana Miller that, I'm sorry, Luana Miller, the mother of Amanda Berry, that her kidnapped daughter was dead. She, quote, unquote, she's not alive, honey. Brown said at the time, according to NBC affiliate WKYC, report on the segment, your daughter's not the kind who wouldn't call. In May, it was discovered that Barry was still alive and had been held captive by Ariel Castillo for nearly a decade. Miller died in 2006 and was not alive to hear the good news or the news that she was exploited by Brown. So mm. she has she has lied, and she I mean some of her stuff didn't come true. I'm not saying she lied. Some of the stuff she predicted didn't come true, or things that and that, and that and that's how it is with most psychics, though. All psychics are on point. Even Nostradamus, if you go back to to the 14th, 15th century with Nostradamus, all his predictions were not correct. So right. I just wanted to just clarify that up just to let people know that everything Sylvia Brown say ain't the truth. As far as numbers and statistics, numbers. We're not talking about what somebody said or who, who told us this. As far as numbers, more people with obesity and underlying health conditions have died from COVID than healthy people. That's a fact. Mm, that's somebody else's fact. We don't really know that. We just going about what they didn't told us. I'm just being real and honest because right. you know how to know. you know how the system works. They're gonna tell you what they want you to hear. They right. the news is an outlet for all politicians, so they're gonna tell you what they just want you to hear and want you to know. They're not gonna really give you all the facts and the truth. So that's why this is why I don't even watch the news no more. I don't do none of that because 
I don't know what you telling me. I'd rather go pay attention to it myself. If somebody says something I'm like, really? Let me, let me, uh, no, that's not really it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like I've, I've mm -hmm. learned how to not pay attention to TV because TV ain't nothing really nice. It's not good for you. It ain't nothing but a bunch of stories and lies. That's like the, the magazines on the countertop. When you got National Enquirer, you got all these, touch you got all these magazines that talk about somebody else's life they really don't even know they just going about what somebody said and who said what right you know so what, what, is, so what are we, so the information that we the information that we get that go against what these publications say it, ain't that false as well ain't that something some somebody else telling us so See, for like, instance as an example so if we if we go off the information that say for instance cnn give us or whoever give us these information these numbers right then you got the opposing media or the posing um aspect of it and they're saying one thing that might be bullshit too right it do it might be like see we don't know so as a people we really don't know who telling us the truth or not we just look right. at it like okay well he said this she said that you know what i'm saying like out here in right. nevada what did they say they was like oh on this day we lost only a hundred people only on this day we lost only 20 people you know what i'm saying but then as i actually talked to a person a physical doctor who literally low-key said they lying. Mm -hmm. You've lost way more today than you did yesterday. Right. And then a lot of people are putting, when people are dying, they're not even, they don't even have COVID systems. But guess what? If you got COVID sitting on your death certificate, that hospital got paid $30,000 per body. Right. As they I heard say. about that. You know, and I heard about that. And I was like, what? I said, right. let me find out. You had somebody go into the hospital that wanted to get COVID testing. They waited four hours. They turned around and left. They had checked in, though, but they turned around okay. and left. It was like, you know what? I can't even wait. This is just too long to be waiting here for a test. Okay. Right. They get a phone call to say that their results were positive for COVID. How did they reserve? How did they get a positive result when they didn't even take the test? Hey, that makes so see, a lot of that was happening. A lot of that mistakes, as they say. Oh, it was a mistake. Yeah, right. I had another client who was called and said that he had a positive test, and then they hung up and called him an hour later and said, oh, "Okay, it wasn't your test; it was someone else's test." We were reading. So. Mm -hmm. Being that you have the underlying issue of asthma, like I have the underlying issue of asthma too. I have my allergies. I'm anemic. You know, I had, you know, double mastectomy. I've, I've went through a lot of things. Um, but a lot of people have asked, am I going to get the vaccine or allow my children to get the vaccine? So me, I am not going to get the vaccine. I have did my research. Mm, I still don't want to do it. You got people that are still doing research on things for 10 to 15 years before they can really make a vaccine. And this vaccine was less than a year. So I, I, I can't, I can't do it. And for me, like we grew up getting injections because our parents said, Hey, you need to get the tuberculosis. You need to get all these, you know, as we got to a, what one month, three months, six months, eight months, a year, and then it kept going from there. So those are the normal ones that has been out for so long that I'm okay with. But when you create something new, no, no, I'm not touching it. So I said, look, when my kids get of age 18 and they want to be vaccinated with anything else, they may do so. That is going to be their choice at that time. But I'm not going to put nothing else in my children's body that I really... I'm not, I'm not good with. So no, I won't be getting it and my children won't be getting it either. I've been okay with my underlining issues. I have my asthma pump. I got my machine. I know, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've been taking all my meds. So I think I've been okay for this long. Knock on wood. I've been okay. Right. And, 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 my, and my perspective of, of it is this, um, for each of his own, like you could do what you want to do. Like anybody could do what they want to do. But me, myself personally, um, I rather take the COVID shot because I'd rather take my chance with the vaccine than the actual disease. And that, and you know, it's like it's like uh, basically it's like uh, wearing yourself against two devils, right? It's two devils, like so. I'm gonna take or two evils. So I'm gonna take the lesser evil. I feel like the lesser evil will be the vaccination. 
compared to the actual disease. The actual disease will ravish your body. I've seen it done. I've seen it happen personally with my kinfolk. I don't want to die sitting in the hospital by myself. I don't want my child to die sitting high. I can't go. So I take my chances with the vaccine um, basically basically because I believe in science, right? I believe in science. I believe in, in uh, um, different techniques. And, and then, you know what? It's not the same thing. Like, they they created the uh the Spanish flu virus. Uh, I think it took them like five years, and that was in 1918, right? This is the 21st century, bro. We creating all kind of things. Hold on, let me just say this real quick. It's we creating all kind of things. Really, like the technology is they sending people to space, rockets, all kind of shit. So I trust and believe that whatever it is, whatever whatever's gonna happen to me, gonna happen to me. I can't like we just said earlier. My time to die is my time to die. So I'm going to choose the, the vaccine over the disease. Now, if I die from the vaccine, so be it. Now, the main reason being is because everybody talking about what they don't want to put in their body. People drink alcohol. People smoke cigarettes. Uh, people do vape. You know what I'm saying? So people don't know what that vape stuff going to do to them 20 years from now because it was never out before. That's why I never mess with vape. Right. And so with that being said, it's a lot of chemicals, even sugar and and, and, and all the other the food we put in our body is killing us. So why not just take my chance on this if it's going to help me not to die? Now, it, it says that uh, I think it was like 80 percent chance that you would not uh, catch it. Right. 80 percent chance you won't catch it. But it's like 95 percent. And if you catch it, you won't die from it. You know what I'm saying? And so I'll take my chances and whatever happens, happens. Because uh like I tell you, I'm not living on, on this worldly this I don't I don't I don't take inspiration from outside entities when it comes to worldly things, right? I take inspiration from, from the higher power. And the higher power has been leading me to say, Hey, protect your family the best way you can, brother. And and my higher self says to do it, so I'm gonna do it. And that's just me. But I'm not saying anybody else should get it. I'm not telling nobody else to do anything they don't want to do, but I will be getting it. My, my my wife will be getting it, and my daughter will be getting it. My um asthmatic daughter. Now my other two children are He's very healthy. Young, she can't get it. You have to be 16 or older. So they okay, won't okay, well, however, so however, I'm saying you rather get it, but you just talked about being godly and praying and keeping on faith. So why you don't keep that same faith when it comes to that? Because at My the end of the day, do I don't I don't get sick like that. So I'm not going to put something within my body that can get me sick because that's what they do. They're going to give you the situation to see if your body is going to react to it, to see that. So that's a lot of things that people don't understand is when you get the flu shot, they're giving you. That to see if you have antibodies to you haven't you haven't you haven't um correctly uh investigated or did your research on corona the coronavirus vaccine because it's not the same as the flu vaccine. The no, flu it's vaccine, not the same as the flu vaccine, but what I'm saying so, is yeah. all vaccines so, though, bro. What I'm all no, I'm no, saying no. is that okay. All I'm saying yes. to you is I'm not stopping you, I just said no no. No, okay, but then that's your opinion. I'm gonna disagree with your opinion. You know what I'm saying? Just like you can disagree with mine, but I disagree. Oh. I'm not saying right. they're the same. I'm just saying point blank period is all vaccines are meant to see if you have the antibodies to fight it. So they're going to give it to you to see if you have what, what it takes. And some people don't have it. They are going to still get sick. So they're still going to, their body is still going to have the symptoms. You know what I'm saying? Just like the flu shot is egg based. You don't remember the 18 year old boy who finally mama was like, hey, go take your flu shot if you want to take the flu shot. Because he wants he was 18. I get to make that choice. He took that flu shot the next day. He was dead. Why? Because he was allergic to eggs and they did not notify. His parent that it was egg based. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I you got to be careful with stuff like you have to. I guess I would want to know exactly what's in that drug before I want to put something else in my body. Like, yeah, we've done our research on all the other drugs coming up, but I'm sorry. You can't create. I don't care how fast things are maneuvering. 
Hell, you got China and all these other countries don't even want, they have to create their own drug, their own vaccine, because they didn't want to touch this one. It's, it's like three or four of them, but I would say this though, I've done my research as far as the COVID vaccine, and it's nothing like the it's nothing like the flu vaccine. They don't I give you COVID. They don't give you COVID. No, you just said they give you the flu, they give you what it is. They don't give you COVID. They what they give you is a protein to fight against the COVID. They don't they don't infect you with COVID with the COVID vaccine. That's a lie, that's a myth that's been put out there. Now the now I'll tell you this the flu vaccine, yeah, they do give you a, a dormant um, version of the flu with the flu vaccine, but the COVID vaccine they do not infect you with the COVID vaccine or the COVID virus. We don't know that for yeah. sure. We can do as much research as possible, but you got people who's taking this vaccine who still gets all the symptoms of COVID the next day, hours after. So I'm sorry, everybody. Everybody's going to react to it differently, just like everybody's yeah, going to react to the flu shot, the measles shot. Everybody has a reaction differently, and for right. some people who have had the sweats, had that, had, had all symptoms of COVID after they got the shot. And that's facts. No, no, nobody's saying that they didn't, but I'm just saying they don't, they don't inject you with COVID. But we don't really know. We can only go about what they say that that's in there. We only can go about just like we have to assume. Well, if that's the, the case, then, right, if that's the case, then we don't know if Jesus is real. We don't know. That's what they told us. We only going on the <laughs> Just saying. That's a whole other, hey, that's a whole other podcast. This is the Culture Effect Podcast. We finna go to commercial break real quick. It's Atenel Bay and Danny B. We see y'all on the other side. Yo, family, this is the Culture Effect Podcast with Atanel Bay and Danny B. We're here to bring you the content from the culture that affects you. Peace, peace, God. What's good with it? What's good? We back. Yeah. Ow. Ow. Right? Hey, I want to I wanna, I wanna stop real quick to, to let everybody know to tap in with the merch, right? Culture Gang. You can go to the culturegang.com. And get all the merch that you see us wear, whether it's uh, the Culture Effect podcast, Culture Effect TV, or Culture Gang. You feel me? But it's all things yeah. Culture Gang, right? You feel me? And that's what it is. We'll have everything up soon. We don't got it up right now. I take that back. We'll have it up soon. We'll mess with us, tap in with us, yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada, yada. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. Um, gang, gang, Culture Effect podcast. Now, one more thing we wanted to talk about before we go is uh, I wanted to talk about is the effects of the economy, right? Mm -hmm. Real quick, real fast. The effects of the economy when it came to coronavirus, a lot of people seen more money than they ever seen in life. You know what I'm saying? During this time, a lot of people lost everything. Uh, you had scammers, you know, PPP loans. There's a lot of niggas in the hood that's rich right now. A lot of people that got caught up because of the scam. So I just want to get your perspective on what you think about uh, the economy or the effects of coronavirus to the economy. Um, let's say, you know, stock market did crash, you know. So rates dropped on a lot of things here. Um and yeah, so, you know, people lost their jobs. That was one. I think that was a big, big thing, you know, but I, I think for me is that all these companies had got all this PPP money, the protection payment program for their employees, but they still laid people off. Wow. So I, I think that was a big one. Cause I was like, man, all these people getting laid off, but all these companies is getting millions and PPP money, but then why are you laying these people up? Because that's the protection. That's the your protection right there to keep people on. So that's what what it's supposed to be for, not for you just to, you know, fire twenty five percent of your company and say, okay, boom. Or you have people that file bankruptcy. 
Right. Who took the money. You know, right. so it, it was a lot of those things. Yeah, you had a lot of people in the stock market. When that stock market crashed, it dropped and it dipped. So a lot of people took a lot of losses at that time. Where it would be, where you was in Merrill Lynch, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, you know, all these companies that house your money, even if it's online or they got a brick and mortar, you lost right. a lot of money. But then at that time, that was the time to invest. Yes, it dropped just like it dropped in 2008. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? It came right back full force. Right. So with that being said, if you did not invest or if you're not even investing right now, something is wrong. I don't care if you got $20, buy a share. Right. When you get paid, if you wear Nike, Jordan, any of those clothes, you should be investing. If you on Google search, you should be investing in Google. You want Apple? You should be investing in Apple. Hey, let me tell you something. The pandemic happened. Toilet paper, soup, hand sanitizer, all those needs you should be investing in because trust me, they went all the way up. Right. Absolutely. And people start making money. The people that um, have the glass, you know, that like now you go into certain places and they got the, the glass that Plexi sits glass. in front, get the place glass. Oh, that company yeah. made money. Plexiglass, yeah. So if you have not invested into that company, something is also wrong. Okay? So well, I, I want to piggyback off what you just said, sis, because there was a lot of companies that actually did well during the pandemic. Some of them you just mentioned. Uh, the, the most dominant one, as we all know, the behemoth Amazon, right? They stocks so Amazon made a killer because people were shopping but, they butts off on Amazon. Because every, everybody was at the crib. Nobody had nothing. Nobody wanted to go to the stores and nothing. So yeah. everybody was shopping on Amazon. Me too, though. You know, so they got it. They got a couple racks out of me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as well as PayPal, uh, Electronic Arts, which is a gaming uh, company. Everybody out there that's on the gaming thing. PlayStation. Know what EA is. EA is. EA, right? Electric Arts. And then Home Depot. Which you would think, well, that, that stock ain't going to do well. But Home Depot did well also because people was at home. So they started doing their little projects to their house. You know, knock down this wall, knock down that wall, put up this bar, whatever. Right. So those are some of the stocks that rose during this pandemic. And a lot of them had to do with at-home, stay-at-home um, consumers, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think, you know, um, it was a lot of scammers out you know what i'm saying that was doing their thing i know a lot of people that that dibbed and dabbed in that i didn't do it personally you know what i'm saying but i would say that i did very financially well during this time because i did invest my money into the right stocks so we got a little nest egg put to the side and you know what I'm saying? we thank the creator for that because yeah at first it, it seemed it, it seemed really dim and and drab you dig like it seemed really bad and so with that being said, we start figuring out what should we do? What should we invest in? So we invest in several stocks. Mm -hmm. There's some other things as well. We invested in ourselves as well. As you see, the Culture Effect podcast and Culture Effect TV was born during the pandemic. It was me. This was me being at home, conjuring up ideas and thoughts. And here we are today. So we definitely invested in ourselves as well. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so... This is the Culture Effect Podcast, and we're here to help y'all move to the next level. Anything y'all want to talk about, let us know. Get into the comments. You know what I'm saying? Hit us up on Instagram at Culture Effect Podcast. Uh, hit us up on Culture Effect TV on Instagram and Facebook. We have all the links at the bottom. Want to give the homie cheers to get a special shout out for hosting the episode he hosted or whatnot. Danny B is in the building. You get what I'm saying? She got a lot of things coming outside of Culture Effect Podcast, but it's still all in the same family. So don't get it twisted. We ride or die to the day, to the wheels fall off. Right, Danny B? Period. You feel me? It's a Culture Effect thing. You know what I'm saying? It's a culture game. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and tap in. We thank y'all for coming out. We thank you. Thank y'all for doing what y'all do. We love y'all. Peace, peace. peace I salute. Out.